Folks, it's Monday, January 9th, 2023. Coming up on the program today, elderly people talking us through their disgusting sex acts. Plus, pleasuring yourself already with mom's spaghetti. A touching tribute to the fallen porn-sniffing dog. And what do you know? Ron Jeremy is just senile enough to avoid his rape trial. Distorted View Daily proudly presents Psychic Energy Reader C.B. Walker. Good evening. Good Friday, CB. Uh-huh. I called last week and you gave me chlamydia. It burned so bad when I peed. Good evening. Let me, ladies and gentlemen, CB did not give no man no chlamydia. Uh-uh. Don't, don't, don't even think like that there. I did not give him chlamydia. I see it's all in context here. Yeah. I said if you call him acting a fool, I am going to see to it that you get chlamydia. I did not say I'm going to give you chlamydia. Do you understand? Good evening. Are you jerking off? Am I jerking off? There are children watching this show. I want to get along my I'm end up here angry. I'm starting off fresh and I feel good. Uh-huh. I look good. I smell good. Uh-huh. I am good. I'm better than that. Uh-huh. I'm calm. And this next call is going to be wonderful. Uh, I can just feel it. I'm calm. I'm calm. Good evening. Fucking genie. Kiss my ass. Ladies and gentlemen. Look, uh, look, uh-uh. Let me relax. Good evening. Hey, stupid. Yes. Ugly? Yeah, okay. What else you got? I can sell your pussy. Really? Hold on, let me write all this down here. What's that again? You said stupid? Uh-huh. Ugly. Ugly? Okay, what else you got here? I can smell your dirty pussy. You can smell that? Okay, uh-huh. Yeah. Hold on, let me write that down, too. Uh, so I, I, I yeah, can yeah, smell... Pussy. What's that? I can smell your what? Yeah, you want me to melt your ass. Okay, okay hold on. What, what, you're going too fast. So I got to write all this down. You got to slow down if you want me to write it down. Okay, look here. Ladies and gentlemen, so far I'm stupid. Uh-huh, I'm ugly. And he can smell my pussy. Uh-huh. Y'all take note of all of that there. It's the Distorted View Show with Tim Henson. At least I'm not going to die because I'm a careless fairy. Fuck you if you're not from Palm Beach County. Where did I park my car? Oh, no. A lot of uh, hot liquid poo just went out all at once. All right, Tim back here with you to start a new week of programs feeling marginally better than last week. It uh, was an abbreviated week of programs. There was no Friday podcast. I did manage to eke out two Sideshow exclusive episodes. So if you need more DV in your life, make sure you're signed up. Superfreaksideshow.com. While I'm not 100% yet, I'm happy to report my shit is uh, slowly beginning to solidify. Slowly. Instead of pure liquid, it's uh, becoming like a milkshake. It's just kind of like a milkshake. And uh, there seems to be a solid seal of sorts. And that means, you know, when I first sit down to take a crap now, it's not like turning on a faucet. I'm pushing out a very soft half-baked loaf. And once that pops out, that's like the cork. And then it's, it's liquidy. So my body's doing something. I probably should have went to the hospital or the doctor at this point, right? Because I'm losing lots of liquids. You should be very dehydrated. I've lost 15 pounds this past week. Is that healthy? Believe me, I can spare the weight. Well, if you found the first two minutes of this podcast disgusting, I've got some bad news for you. The next 10 minutes aren't going to be much better. The reason is this. Longtime listeners of the show know that I am fascinated by the concept of elderly sex. Now, please note, I said I am fascinated. I am not turned on by the idea of old people having sex or seeing old people have sex or smelling old people having sex. That, to me, has got to be the worst aspect of elderly sex. Like, if you were in the room with a with a couple of old people doing it, I could get past the sights. I've seen a lot of fucked up shit in my day. I've become desensitized. But the smells, yeah, that one I might not be able to get past. Old people getting all hot. You know what happens when they get hot? They start to sweat. And then that sweat drips down their ass cracks, man. And that activates all sorts of disgusting scents. You know old people can't reach back there and wipe their asshole properly after they poop. That sweat is is going to uh, uh, rehydrate the crusted up shit. 
the stuff that's, that's like caked around the asshole that the old person couldn't get. And that's gonna the, just funkify the entire room. You know, you gotta be able to scrub your asshole. Old people can't do that. They can't reach back there. You gotta scrub that shit. You don't stop until there's blood. That's how you know it's clean. Ting. Old people can't do that because they're all weak and arthritic. Which, by the way, introduces a whole other scent into their gross sexual escapades. Uh, Asper cream, Ben Gay, whatever the hell they're rubbing onto their knees. You can't expect grandma to do doggy style without a little assist. I consider that to be the near-dead equivalent to juicing, by the way. I don't think Asper cream should be allowed when having sex. Those are performance-enhancing drugs. There's no way you should be able to get on all fours like that otherwise. Anyway, like getting back to uh, the scents of old sex, I'd like to bottle that and sell it as a perfume. In total, what do we have here? We got uh, the heated up old musty piss. Old people are always leaking, even if they don't wear adult diapers. Like in the crevices of their crotch, there's some old pee just stinking up the place. So you got the heated up old musty piss, the sweaty shit concoction that I just talked about, and then, of course, the mentholated aroma of topical arthritis cream. But that's not all, right? Because uh, then every old person has nasty coffee breath from their morning McDonald's senior coffee, and then whatever gross shit uh, the elderly ate for lunch, probably sardines, like that level of nasty. It's a potpourri of unpleasantness, which is also the tagline for Distorted View Daily. Distorted View, a daily potpourri of unpleasantness. Well, as you might suspect, I do have a new clip of old people getting freaky. Now, sometimes when we play granny porn or whatever on the podcast, the grannies are actually like in their late 60s, early 70s. That's almost cheating, right? That shouldn't be considered elderly porn. Maybe I'm saying that because I'm getting closer to my 60s. Starting to inch up on me. Hey, wait a second. 60s aren't elderly. But really, when you hear the term elderly porn, you want like, you know, Really wrinkled prunes going at it. Today, we've got some people in their mid-80s having sex. Okay, that's acceptable. That's definitely near-dead territory. Bonus, uh, today's installment is a real lemon party. Yes, it's all dudes in this clip. Get ready for a gay old time. Let's uh, see what this fellow is up to here. I'm going to take you back and do versatile again. Get ready for a wild ride. I'm going to do the versatile again. I love the way old people, they just talk about sex so weird. Like they don't know how to be, how to talk hot, you know? Revi versatile revisited. Yes. With some new shots and some new material here. This guy has been adding some moves to his routine. We're going to start with a mutual jack-off session and move to 69-ing. Then I'm going to do a Bulgarian pull-up and transition to a triple Lutz and finally get fucked on the balance beam. I hope I can stick the landing. I got to say, that sounds technically impressive, but I'm pretty sure I saw the exact same routine in Lily Hammer back in 94. I think the judges are going to penalize you for lack of originality. They were really hoping you'd bring something new to the mix, you know? Anyway, I apologize. I'm getting off track here. Grandpa talks about how great it is to be versatile for about four minutes. He likes it all, which is great. But like he he talks like an old person where you just can't quite understand what he's trying to say. OK, we'll be seeing you on different versatile things during the film. The film, like it's a fucking 1939 RKO production. Enjoy this versatile piece of cinema. Dude, it's recorded on someone's cell phone. There is an abrupt cut, and then the next thing you know, we're in uh, this guy's bedroom with a friend. Ahead of time play. You know, this is all very nice and good, but what about the other end? Oh. <laughs> Ooh, that is nice. Look at that, boys. But now we're going to play with the other end. Do you see how old people talk in these sex videos? It's so weird, right? What do we have here? Let's take a gander. My, my, what a weekly set of balls we have. Have you ever heard homemade porn like this before? Imagine you're uh, making a, a sexy video with your girlfriend or wife, and you're narrating your way through it like that. It's a fucking mood killer. There's no way your girlfriend's going to let you have sex with her. 
when you start talking like that. All right, here we go. It's sexy time, but first, I'm going to point out all the attributes of uh, my beautiful girlfriend's naked body. Here, let's start at them uh, great big old titties. Uh, that's real nice. Nipples are a little askew, but that's all right. Because I'm focusing my attention on those great big pussy lips. Oh, look at them strips. Yeah, I'm going to spend a lot of time down on there. Why don't you turn around, honey? Just just turn on your camera and fuck. We don't need some sort of like PowerPoint presentation. Before we get down to all the sexing, I just want to point out all the areas I'm going to be focusing on. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Now that's something special, isn't it, guys? These balls, and then that huge cock, and then what do we got going up here? Well, that would be his butthole. Oh, yeah. Look at that, guys. We're not going to get uh, down to fucking right away, though. Oh, that's going to be so nice, my cock sliding in there. But first, we're going to do some dildo work here. Yeah, watching this clip certainly does feel like work. Let's take a listen and hear how this 86-year-old guy handles just a little butt plug in his pooper. That's going in there nice. Ah, there it went. See? Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stop it! You're killing him! I don't think he likes that. The other dude doesn't really seem to care. He's just powering on through. He just want, he wants to prep him with the... With the dildo so he can fuck him. Wow. wow. Come here, Daddy. You ready to get fucked? You want Are this you? in you? No! Huh? You like that, boys? I'm going to stick this up his horny asshole now. Yeah, I'll just stick it right in there. Gay guys are so romantic. Where is it? Oh, oh. that's slid in there. Nice. Oh. 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 He's liking this. Oh. oh, is that the read you're getting on the situation? Oh, oh, that's a nice hole. I don't know if that's the case. Oh, yeah. Ow. Oh, yeah. Ow. Yeah. Ow. Ow. Like that going out all the way out almost? The guy keeps yeah. asking, you like that, huh? Oh. And uh, it back in. the dude does not respond. Oh. He's just like, oh. See what's going in there, boys? Oh. He likes it. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's the sound of someone who's liking it. That loud yelp. Ow! Don't feel too bad for this guy, though. He gets pleasured eventually. He he really likes it when his <laughs> when his old man butthole is licked. Mmm. There's a uh, there's a good chance yeah. these 85 year old oh. men are oh. having oh, more yeah. sex than you, oh. Oh. and that's got to oh. be a depressing oh. thought. I'm so sorry, mm. freaks, if that's the case. Yeah. Uh, oh. 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 You're not getting your butthole licked. There's an almost 90 year old man who is. What the fuck is wrong with you? All right, there you go. Just a couple of old dudes banging for your Monday. Before we completely move away from pornography, I've got two short food-related clips. First up, a college hunk eating some of his mama's spaghetti. I got a package in the mail today, and it was from my mama. She sent me her best pasta. This is for you, Red Boy. I'm guessing Red Boy is a viewer of this guy's porn who's into food. I love my mama's pasta. Mm. Oh my God. So oh. it's pretty much just a shirtless man eating pasta. That's so good. She makes it, mm. she makes it just the way I like it with extra pasta. Well, this guy's an idiot. Make it extra pasta e, mama. I just want to eat it all at once. Mm. He foregoes the fork. This reminds me of when I was a boy in Little Italy eating my mama's pasta. And he just he's just using his hands. It's getting messier and messier, you see. Oh my god, mama. Oh, mama. Thank you for the pasta, Mama. Uh, as the camera pans back, he starts to smear the spaghetti all over his uh, body, and you can clearly see he's no longer wearing any pants. Oh, yeah. 
Oh my god, mama. Well, now he's just full on masturbating while moaning, mama, mama. It's so good, I get horny. Oh, you like uh, your mama's yeah. pasta. That warms my heart. Yeah, thank you, mama. Oh, grazie, grazie. Mama's just oh, so happy. Yeah. You like her um, pasta. She doesn't care you're masturbating with it. The pasta. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's the best pasta ever. Oh, yeah, mama. Oh, this pasta's so good. Uh, yeah. Just like when I was a boy. Oh, that's the best way to eat it all over my body. He does come, by the way. He was able to get off using pasta as lube. Thank you for the pasta, Mama. Well, I'm sure she's sorry she sent it to you now. She expected you to eat it, not play with your food. The other porn clip isn't really food related, although something's going down her throat. I'm just throwing this one in because, you know, there's been a lot of guy stuff. I feel bad, you know, I don't want you mad at me. Are we going to be okay if I play some dildo gagging? We've got a female, a real female. I'm not playing any tricks on you guys. She's just sitting there with some, uh, you know, toys, and she's going to jam them down her throat. She also has a, like, fish bowl. It's empty, but it's there, I guess, to collect all of her spit and maybe throw up. I don't know. Let's see how she does. What? Hmm? Almost got a guaggle quaggle there. Come on, honey. We're so close. Yes! More! Come on! I think she's gearing up. Come on. Quackle, 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 quack, 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 quack. <laughs> okay. I think that's the best we're going to get. Not bad. Elderly gay dudes eating butt and chicks giving us that quackle, quackle. This is how you start a new week of podcasts. All right. Enough porn. Let's move on now. Oh, a lot of people sent me this next clip of a a young girl on a train in London. I guess she's on her way back from school or something. Appears to be a lot of children. Uh, She was told not to vape on the train. She looks to be like 13 years old. I don't know what the fuck she's vaping. But uh, she's not happy about uh, being told not to vape. Don't even have chat for me. Just move it. Stick it. Shut up. Shut up. You're not going to do that. No, 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 no. You're not going to do shit. 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 Exactly. Carl, you just mean to shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. I'm not a big girl. I'll be here. You're a big girl, but you're not a big girl. How old are you? How old are you? How old are you? How old are you? 27. 27 and you call yourself a fucking grown woman and you stupid. What? You silly fucking bitch. You silly bitch. <laughs> Where do you become bitch. a grown woman silly then? Silly bitch, man. Y'all are silly bitches. The 27-year-old woman continues to engage with this 13-year-old. Other people, now that now like a guy is getting involved with the fight, uh, and then I think someone else chimes in here. <laughs> The one thing, the one thing, the one fucking thing you will regret. Shut the fuck up. Another guy telling her to shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. Mass pandemonium on this train now. It's kind of hard to hear what's being said. At one point, the adult, I think the 27 year old woman, uh, says, Look, I'm not going to touch a child. Because the kid keeps keeps going. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Are you, are you, are you gonna do it? You're trying to, you're gonna do it. I'm not gonna touch a child. Shut the fuck up, man. Shut the fuck up. There's gotta be some extenuating circumstances where it would be okay to hit a child, right? Could we, as a, a group of people, as a society, come together with some rules? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninety-nine point nine percent of the time, it's it's never okay to hit a kid. It's wrong. Children are precious. They're our future. All the things you're supposed to say. But that, like, 0.1% of the time, we gotta be able, we just have to be allowed to do it. Just clock these motherfuckers straight between the eyes. 
can I don't know, can can there be like an act of Congress or something? Can Congress come together in a bipartisan way and set forth some guidelines that we can all follow? Anyway, uh, a guy once again chimes in and tells this, this kid to shut the fuck up because he wants some peace and quiet. She tells him to stay in his own lane. She's like, as a man, you should not be involved in this conversation at all. But I'm sorry. You're so fucking loud. You're, you're making it his business, right? I think it's okay he has an opinion. Why do you even get involved? You're getting on my fucking tits. That's what you're doing. You're wearing my thing, well, there you go. I think you get the idea. The remixes are already starting to pour in. Quite the banger. I've got one more angry individual to share with you. This guy is at the Walmart looking for money. He's at the customer service center. I don't know if he's trying to cash a check or trying to get some sort of like Western Union money transfer. Doesn't really matter. I don't think he's providing uh, an adequate form of identification and he is not able to access the money he's, he thinks he so rightfully deserves. That's when he just starts destroying the whole place, like just throwing monitors and cash registers and shit on the ground. No, I want my money. If I can't get money, nobody's getting their money. <laughs> the fuck? I've been out here with all this whole fucking flow, this whole fucking shit. Ain't nobody getting their fucking money. It's not fair. It's not fucking fair. It's not fair. Nobody getting their fucking money. Let's leave, Nigga. Let's leave, sir. Why are you doing Kurt Cobain like that, dude? It should be noted there is a Walmart security guard just sort of standing around doing nothing. <laughs> Nobody's getting your money. Let's leave. So the fuck I just get a job. How do I get to do anything? You're assholes. You're racist. I'm racist. Yes. Put the fucking, put a fake goddamn fucking X zero to something. Let's leave, sir. So I can give her goddamn money. Sir, let's leave. I've been doing this shit all day. Do you want me to call you? I don't fucking care. Let's your white boy. Let's leave. Goddamn, no way. That's right. He claims racism and then starts, he's the one saying racist stuff. All day. Do you want me to call you? I don't fucking care. Let's your white boy. Let's leave. Goddamn, no way. fucking cares about you? I know why you want me. Let's leave. And I'm good looking too. Let's leave. I fucking hate you. Now he's just sort of leaning on the counter, waiting for money, I guess. It's so, it's so strange because he's destroyed all of the equipment in the vicinity, the, the very same equipment that would be needed to pull up and access the money. So even if they wanted to, they, they couldn't give you cash. I hate all of you fucking white people. Why would they send me an ID with no, why? I'm not sure. Why? I want to do that. Nope. I can't! I'm one man! I'm one man! What the fuck did you get? Oh, he found another portion of the counter that still had some computers on it. What the fuck did you get? Knock that the fuck no over. No money for nobody! If I can't get shit, can nobody get shit? What kind of bullshit is that, bro? That's a fucking war shit, dog. I've been working my ass off all day. I work my ass off for this shit. I understand the frustration. You go to Walmart thinking you're going to be able to cash your check, get some money. But when things don't work out, you not only punish the Walmart employees, you punish all of the other customers in line waiting. You can't get money, no one can. Well, oh, no. Just throwing a few more things there. Nigga. And one last parting N-word before he leaves. Kind of a baffling slur to utter, considering everyone you've just encountered is white, as you've commented on before. I don't think screaming the N-word is going to hurt anyone's feeling particularly, but I don't know. There you go. Tyler Soros Rex found an interesting new uh, BitChute account. BitChute, of course, is the home of Galileo2333. Also, a lot of like alt-right people who have been banned from YouTube end up on BitChute. 
kind of a YouTube clone with very lax rules. The account that Tyler Soros Rex stumbled upon believes uh, they are being gang stalked. This is a concept we are familiar with here on DV. We have featured other Utards who believe that uh, groups of people are after them, hunting them down, stalking them. Previously, we've had people who believe that uh, the police are gang stalking them or just the government in general. Today, we've got someone who believes the Jews are after them. Just had to vent a bit. Yeah, just some like elderly Jews just turned up at this like rest stop here. And like he's, you know, he's pulled up and I don't know he's a Jew. And, um... Okay, so the evidence of gang stalking here is you're out in public. And there happens to be people you think are Jews in the vicinity. You've got a Jew hunch. And that means even if there are Jews in the air, like where you are at, even if there are Jewish people walking around, it doesn't mean they're stalking you. They're just living their life. They have no reason to pay any attention to you. These people who think they're being gang stalked are like narcissists, right? You think you're so important that Jewish people as a whole are out to get you, to monitor you. For what fucking reason? That's the one thing these people can never explain. Why is the government out to get you? Why are the police coming to get you? Why is the sun gang stalking you? That's the other one we've heard. They're like light beings from outer space are monitoring you. Okay, why? What are you doing that's so interesting? And, like, he's, you know, he's pulled up, and I don't know he's a Jew. But, and um, so then I turned around, and the, the guy's like... Oh, I can't quite figure out if this is a man or a woman. Also, are there a lot of Jewish people in Australia or New Zealand or wherever this dude's from? Another one. Um, looks like that one was just sitting behind me, too. Um, so anyway, the dickhead's like... Oh, woes. The fucking woes is me. So anyway, I didn't film him because I was out, like, like taking my rabbit for a walk. So I just came. East. I'm sorry. What was <laughs> that? Might be the weirdest part of this video. Out, like, like taking my rabbit for a walk. You're taking your rabbit out for a walk. No wonder people are looking at you. That's why people are paying attention to you. It's not that they're like Jewish people stalking you. It's just people. It's people wondering why the fuck do you have a rabbit on a leash? That's unusual. You don't see that every day. Stop doing weird shit, and people will pay no attention to you whatsoever. I was just clicking around, uh, looking at some of his other videos. Here he is confronting someone in a truck. So you care more about what? So why don't you care about Jewish pedophilia? Well, it's not a real problem in Australia. That's pretty much why I don't care about it. There's like seven Jews in Australia. Even if every single one of them is a pedophile, still not a huge problem. It says on that, it says on the first Google page, Jewish pedophiles, it says on every respectable link that you crazy people remove your pedophiles. You don't let police interfere. You move your pedophiles to some other area of the country. Are you sure you're talking about Jewish people and not Catholic priests? They touch a child, then they're just they're moved to another church. That's what it sounds like. That doesn't bother you. You're just a hardworking Aussie, are you? Your people have collectively fucking sold this country off to yourselves and foreigners. It should also be noted that the uh, guy in the truck has his window up. I don't even think he can hear what's being said. You're, in your grandfather's day, they were doing okay. it. All right. All right. Just another crazy it. person and on pitch shoot. And with that, let's get into the crazy bizarre twist. Ta-da! news right now if you are enjoying distorted view daily please consider signing up for the sideshow that is our member site where you gain full access to the entire archive of programs more importantly every week i do brand new sideshow exclusive podcasts even though last week was a complete shit show i still managed to do Two Sideshow exclusive episodes. If you want to hear those and all of the uh, Sideshow content I have planned for you this week, including tomorrow's Sideshow exclusive podcast, sign up right now. Superfreaksideshow.com. Memberships are very inexpensive. Only $6.99 a month. Even less when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. All major credit cards and PayPal accepted. It's a real business we got going here. 
I think even Maestro is accepted. And some sort of Japanese credit card. I'm from Japan, from Japan, from Japan. I'm a Japanese man. No, no, <laughs> we don't do the offensive jingles when I'm trying to get money out of Japanese people. I'm just saying if you live in Japan, there are ways to sign up for the sideshow. So we are an international affair. When you sign up, you get a personalized RSS feed. It's password protected, and you can just plug that into most podcasting apps. Now, if you listen to DV in Spotify, you may or may not know that you can't add podcast feeds into Spotify yourself. There's there's no option to you know add a feed. You can only search for podcasts in Spotify, and if it's there, you can add it, and Distorted View is in there. Thankfully, if you use Spotify to listen to DV, there is a way to get Sideshow content. You can sign up for the Sideshow right in the Spotify app. It takes just a few taps, bing, bang, boom, you're in. And uh, when you sign up, you'll not only see all of the, the free episodes of DV, you'll also begin to see all of the uh, the new Sideshow exclusive episodes. Just another way to get Sideshow access it's super easy. You don't have to mess around with feeds or anything. So if you are a Spotify user, same with Apple Podcasts, by the way. If you happen to use Apple Podcasts, there's a, a link to subscribe to Sideshow content that way. So just a few easy ways to get uh, full access to all of the exclusive programs. All right. Uh, there you go. For more information, check out distortedview.com and superfreaksideshow.com. Don't forget, we've got that Patreon account, patreon.com slash distortedview. Just another way uh, to help the show out. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and Sideshow members. You are the reason this show continues. All right. Three very quick stories now. First up, does this rapist ring a bell? Hey, this is Ron Jeremy. And you're listening to Distorted View. Way to sell it, Ron. Really sounds like he's a fan of DV. And not like he doesn't have a clue what the fuck he's saying. And you're listening to Distorted View. Is that right? I think the person that got him to record that wanted him to be extra careful because many, many years ago... Ron did another intro for DV, but he said, you're watching Distorted View and just fucked everything up. Anyway, I don't ever play that intro now because, you know, he was convicted of rape. Kind of a downer. Although, do I really mind that convicted rapists are associated with DV? It doesn't bother me. Not like he re you know, really had any association with DV. He's just, just a porn guy, right? Well, Ron Jeremy is back in the news. According to the Los Angeles Times... The retired adult film star, not retired by choice. He's retired because he can't film any fuck scenes, right? In I mean, I guess he could in jail, but it would require a uh, serious change of lifestyle. Uh, according to the Los Angeles Times, the retired adult film star, 69. Nice. I would have guessed he was older than that, by the way. Whose legal name is Ronald Jeremy Hyatt is suffering from severe dementia and will be declared unfit for trial on January 17th. And he will likely be placed in a state-run hospital, following allegations from at least 20 women since June 2020. Oh, I thought he was already in jail. I guess uh, the trial was coming up. And surprise, surprise, now all of a sudden he suffers from dementia. This is the same thing, like, that happened to Bill Cosby, right? Remember when Bill Cosby was in prison, and all these stories were coming out, he's like, Bill Cosby's blind! And he's going senile and he has diabetes. You can't keep him in prison. Uh, eventually he was released, I guess, because of, I don't know why, why Bill Cosby was released. I guess we just release rapists after a while. That's what we do. Anyway, so Bill Cosby was released and then boom, all of a sudden, you know, he, he's miraculously recovered from everything that ails him. As a matter of fact, I was just uh, reading a news story about how Bill Cosby is planning a tour. Yeah. He's been polishing up a new uh, stand-up comedy set. A few years ago, when he was in jail, he was on his fucking deathbed. Now he's hitting the circuit. In the case of the hedgehog here, Ron Jeremy, District Attorney Paul Thompson said that mental health experts enlisted by both the prosecutors and Hyatt's legal team determined his condition, of which there was no evidence he was faking. Okay, so he must have paid off some people. As a result of the agreement of the experts, the defendant will be declared incompetent to stand trial, his prognosis for improvement is not good, Thompson wrote. If he does not improve, we will not be able to try him for his crimes, he continued, because criminal proceedings are suspended as long as he is incompetent. Uh, we also cannot get a guilty plea from him or discuss other measures to get justice for the victims in this case. Hyatt can still be declared fit for trial in the future if his condition improves. Well, if Ron Jeremy is smart, this is going to be it for him, right? We should probably never see or hear from him again. 
I think he's just, you know, just going to stay at a nice little spa for the rest of his life. Kick back and lay low. Uh, Some of Hyatt's relatives reportedly suspected that he suffered from dementia before his arrest in 2020. Experts reached their conclusion based on medical documents as well as interviews with Hyatt, his relatives, and L.A. County Sheriff deputies who interacted with him during his incarceration. Leanne Young, a former British adult film star and one of Hyatt's accusers, said that she was kind of numb. After hearing of the decision, noting that his indictment sparked a necessary conversation about consent in the adult film industry. It's going to come down to public opinion now, and public opinion has looked at Ron like a god. It could be an indication to other predators or viewers of porn that they can get away with such crimes. Well, yeah, as long as they go senile afterwards. That's the trick. Uh, Back in August of 2021, Hyatt was indicted on more than 30 counts of sexual assault with accusations dating back to 1996 and victims ranging from the age of 15 to 51. He pleaded not guilty and has maintained his innocence. He was initially charged with a dozen counts of forcible rape, seven counts of forcible oral copulation, six counts of sexual battery by restraint, four counts of sexual penetration by a foreign object, two counts of sexual penetration of an unconscious or a sleep person, and one count of committing a lewd act on a minor. Was that for a film? If so, uh, what's the title? Just for journalistic research. Second story we have for you today. Oh no, I've got another death to report. The first of 2023. This one stings because I'm an animal lover. Although, to be honest, the dog was kind of a dick. He didn't bark so much as he narked. Thank you. After a life of sniffing out criminals, the retired porn-sniffing dog named URL (laughs) died on December 30th. I don't know if you pronounce it URL or URL. URL makes more sense. All right, Weber County Sheriff's Office over there in Utah says URL was the fourth dog in the country to be certified and trained as an electronic storage detection canine. Detective Cameron Hartman and the canine completed more than 200 search warrants where they obtained digital evidence for cases that most often involved child sexual exploitation material and or child sexual abuse material. So the dog didn't sniff out child porn per se. It's not like, you know, child porn has a certain stink to it. Child porn smells like bubble gum and hot, soft children's breath. Like a dewy peach smell. Yeah, maybe apple. Little girls wear that apple shampoo. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll throw it over to you guys. Call into the voicemail line. What do you think child porn would smell like if child porn had a smell? This is not a problematic conversation, is it? No, I mean, you know, the, the dog was it could smell out like what, you know, electronics, like what an SD card smells like. Right. I'm guessing or a flash drive. That's what the dog was trained to sniff. The list of remarkable finds for the canine include a USB drive that was disguised as a key on a key ring full of keys. Uh, also a micro SD card in a closed baby food jar in a small pencil box full of other items that was inside of a large cedar chest. Somehow the dog was able to sniff that out. It's almost like the guy who was hiding that child porn knew a dog would come looking for it. Yeah, we'll put it in a cedar chest, right? It'll smell like cedar. That'll throw the dog off, right? And then we'll we'll put it in a pencil box and then we'll we'll put a, a, a jar of baby food in the pencil box and we'll seal the baby jar. Like, how the fuck could the dog sniff that out? That's insane. Good boy. I do have to say that uh, this news story does seem to be helping pedophiles with ideas of where to store their pornography. Think about it. There's only four of these SD card sniffing dogs in the United States. Chances are you don't live in an area where they have one of these things. Humans would have a hard time finding a tiny micro SD card in a baby jar, in a pencil box, in a cedar chest, or inside of a key on a key ring, you know? Ooh, all very good ideas. All right, uh, where else here? A cell phone hidden in a book and even uh, cell phone parts hidden in a wall behind a toilet. That toilet was in a public restroom. The Weber County Jail. Oh, that's a great place to store child porn. Who would think to look there? A wall behind the toilet at the Weber County Jail. Mm, Brilliant. 
The almost eight-year-old police dog recovered dozens of critical pieces of digital evidence that otherwise would have been overlooked. URL also provided emotional support to officers working in the stressful realm of child exploitation and the children who were scarred during search warrants. URL and his handler, Hartman, worked with many law enforcement agencies in the state, including the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, FBI, Department of Homeland Security, Utah Department of Corrections, yada, yada, yada. His unique skill set led to the nickname Porn Sniffing Dog, which helped him to make several appearances in local, national, and international news. URL was even interviewed by actor Terry Crews, okay, and was featured on the longest-running reality TV show Cops. URL had a success rate of approximately 22 percent. Well, that doesn't sound so good, resulting in the recovery of dozens of critical pieces of digital evidence that would have otherwise been overlooked. Hartman posted a farewell letter to URL on social media, which I'm not going to read because I will bawl like a baby. I cannot deal with dying dogs. Sorry. It's the one tiny warm spot I have left in my heart. All the rest is cold and blackened. Final story we have for you today. Carrier pigeons are making a comeback. Who could have saw that coming for 2023? You got to get your hands on some of these birds, you know, start raising pigeons. They're the alpacas for the 2020s, especially if you sell drugs. Uh, we've got a story here from Vancouver, Canada. A prison union spokesperson says a pigeon carrying a miniature backpack. Oh, how fucking cute is that? Carrying a miniature backpack full of meth. Oh, how fucking cute is that? Was captured last week at a British Columbia correctional institution. John Randall, Pacific Regional President of the Union of Canadian Correctional Officers, said the bird was apprehended at Pacific Institution in Abbotsford, 80 kilometers east of Vancouver. He said a fabric backpack tied to the pigeon contained crystal meth. I'm pretty sure I've heard of like monkeys over there in like, I don't know, Vietnam or wherever there are monkeys. You know, room in the street, Thailand, maybe. I don't know. But uh, they'll help drug dealers sell meth, right? Like uh, the, the drug dealer will give the monkey meth. Maybe I'm thinking of the movie Hangover. Did that happen in <laughs> Hangover? One of those Hangover movies where there was like a monkey who's giving out meth or high on meth or something. Don't listen to anything I say. My memory is shit. Half the time I'm lying to you anyways. And the other half, I'm just remembering things that happened in movies. All right, Randall said he was told by officers that the gray bird was spotted with its unusual cargo on December 29th in a yard at the facility, and they set up a trap to catch it. Davinder Arjula, or something, an assistant warden at Pacific Institution, confirmed there was a recent interception of contraband at the facility, and the matter is under investigation. Randall said in recent years, prison officers had been on the lookout for drones carrying drugs. Yeah, that makes more sense. I would have expected uh, someone to try that first, but you can hear those drones coming. They're, going, They're way bigger than birds. They stick out, right? But birds, birds that's a good idea. Uh, it was the first time in 13 years as a correction officer he had heard of a living bird being used. My initial reaction was shock because of all the advancements in technology and the number of drones we've seen. The fact that it's tied to a pigeon is abnormal, said Randall. He said smugglers would have had difficulty getting a bird to land in a precise location compared to a drone, but he suggested that they had gone old school because of officers' increasing awareness of drug smuggling drones. Using a pigeon raised investigative difficulties compared to drones, said Randall, because the precision of a drone made it easier to pinpoint the intended recipient of the contraband. He said the case was an indication of how creative criminals were becoming in smuggling drugs, which should be a massive concern to everybody. Just let's just kill all the pigeons then. There, problem solved. They can't get the drugs in anymore through pigeons. The introduction of drugs into federal prisons is becoming a huge crisis. The whole goal of prisons is to rehabilitate and release people into society as law abiding citizens. Now we got meth pushing pigeons flying into our corrections facilities, just gumming up the whole works. Of course, birds would be flying around with meth. You've seen how birds act. They're all tweakers. So meth. Oh, meth. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Monday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. 
Well, I love to hear from you freaks, and there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at Distorted View on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook.com slash Distorted View Show. You know all the ways to contact me. Uh, don't forget, if you pledge at least $5 to our Patreon account, you get access to a special voicemail line where I will play your calls first. All right, let's do just a couple real quick calls here from uh, some of our patrons. Hey, Timmy Boots, Unicorn Hamster checking in. I just wanted to call and let you know that uh, I, too, did not know about uh, Mario Brothers Part 3 being a, a theater show. Type. Yeah, I think I mentioned this on a Sideshow exclusive podcast. Uh, so let me just reiterate because everyone needs to hear this. I, I couldn't believe it when I heard it, but okay. I learned that uh, Super Mario Brothers 3, the game, as opposed to the lavish Broadway musical Super Mario Brothers 3. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, the game Super Mario Brothers 3 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, you may recall, it, uh, it begins with a curtain rising and then you see Mario and Luigi running around. Well, according to the creator uh, of Mario, the whole game, Super Mario Brothers 3, is supposed to be a play, a stage show or something. It's not supposed to be real life for Mario. And if you look at uh, some of the uh, the designs of the levels, you'll see like some of those uh, giant uh, blocks that Mario can stand on and run on and stuff. They, they, look, they, they look like they have little bolts on each corner or screws, like something, screw, you know, keeping these things afloat. And some of the risers that, that Mario jumps on high up uh, will we'll have uh, ropes or something that go on up. Like something is holding them up in the sky. And then, of course, at the end of the level, what happens? When Mario runs to the end, there's like this little break and uh, everything goes black. And that is supposed to represent that Mario is, is at the end of the level. He's backstage at that point. And uh, that is the uh, a little bit of Super Mario Brothers trivia that I learned and shared, I believe, with Sideshow members. I hope it wasn't on a free side uh, program because I just uh, regurgitated the same fucking information again. Thing. I just learned that recently myself. Yeah, it's weird. And uh, yeah, um, why don't instead of... Uh, I don't know, last week you were talking about you and Lord Douche were wanting the dock or something but y'all both are uncut you've been no no what i said was a listener provided uh, as a christmas present this uh, very funny gift it's a, it's a knitted thing where i can stick my dick and balls in one end and someone else can stick their dick and balls in the other and it will uh, will, will let us dock robbed of a real normal sex life up uh, well I don't know. Some may argue because you don't know what it's like. All I know is my friend once told me to try lubing this up. When you're when you're uncut, you don't need lube. But he was using this lube, and I tried it, and it stung the inside of my shaft. It was not pleasant. Like it's underneath the foreskin, it stung. Very ner- lot of nerves to the touch. So. I don't recommend the docking. I recommend you both share a flashlight. Oh. That looks like it feels good. Like a I double-ended flashlight. The gay porn with two faggots using flashlights, and man, you know, they shoot big loads, big huge ropes of cum. Yeah. So. Uh, All right. Well. Anybody here? Unicorn Hamster is suggesting we get a double-ended flashlight. Well, thank you very much, Unicorn Hamster. We have to move on, though. Tim, hey, boo. Uh, this is Tweet Toilet. Um, I hope you enjoyed my shitty meat skeleton from earlier in the week. Of course. Um, two uh, things. One. Happy January 6th. Happy Insurrection. Marks the two-year anniversary of the funniest thing God has ever given me on television. (laughs) Um, Also, uh, I was listening to an old... uh, Yes? uh, 2013 episode, I think it was your April Fool's episode, where you (laughs) fucking reenacted or added, uh, dubbed over an entire episode of Perfect Strangers and I wanted to kill myself but I listened to the whole thing <laughs> it was the most unfunny bit I've ever heard in my life but I couldn't stop listening to it so fuck you for that retroactively fuck you for that thank you uh, well it was a, like I didn't add I don't think I added anything to that episode of Perfect Stranger. it was just it was me doing both characters you inspired me um, I'm 
I'm going to pursue my dream. Uh, me and my boyfriend both decided we both have dreams in the arts because we're fans that we want to pursue. Mine's his writing, his is music. And we really decided we're going to, this year, we're really going to push it. I actually just oh. uh, put in my two weeks' notice for my shitty job, which I listen to DV at all the time. So I still huh. listen to DV. Still be a sideshow freak, just won't be there. I want to uh, say, anyways, you, sh- uh, you, you know, a- you should uh, follow your dreams, but I don't know how wise it is <laughs> that you quit your job. Do you have anything lined up? Do you have money saved? Like, wow. Good time. I know I you want to, what do you want to do? Yours is writing. You want to write? What do you want to write exactly? Jan six. Talk to you later. Bye. Like, is your whole thing like like you and your partner are gonna collaborate where you write the lyrics to music and he's gonna write all the uh, you know like the instrumental? Or are you like gonna write books? I just don't know if this is a good idea. I'm sorry to introduce doubt into your great plan here. Of course, I don't know anything about you. You guys could both be brilliant at what you do. Maybe you should send me some samples of your work and I can judge this. You know me. I have impeccable tastes and uh, I, I'll give you good advice. This is something you should have you should have done before you quit your job, quite frankly. Jimmy Boo, this is Tom in Tennessee. Hello, Tom. I have been with you since episode number five and am both a Patreon and a Sideshow member. I know this is a little bit late notice, but on January the 9th... That's today! I will be turning 62. Holy and shit. And I was wondering if you could play a birthday song for me. Well, of course I can. Rather than play, uh, you know, Richard Simmons, since Tom is a longtime listener of the show, since episode five, he will no doubt remember Mrs. Miller... She used to appear semi-frequently on the podcast, so let's let's have her sing Tom a happy birthday song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tom. Happy birthday, Tom. Happy birthday, you. <laughs> uh, dust off that old bitch. It's been so long since I've done Mrs. Miller. I need to work on her voice. Tom. <laughs> happy, happy birthday. There. Happy, happy birthday. Oh, my little Mashugana. <laughs> I wish I could kiss your Kepala right now. Okay, all right. Thank you, Richard Simmons. And thank you, Tom, for being such a great longtime listener of the show. Happy birthday, my friend. That is all the time we have on this edition of the show. I want you guys to email me. Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you. 206-666-4463. That's 206 Oh, God. It's oh, God. Come here, Daddy. You ready to get fucked? Spread the distortion, STD. Tell all your friends about the show. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever you can rate and review podcasts. I will see you back tomorrow if and only if you're Sideshow members. Otherwise, I'll see you back on Wednesday. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. Who ate all my cum? A mystery. This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrod Media Group. Learn more at scrod.net.